La salita successiva è quella di Miramare, prima di Savona. È la ripida strada che i giorni nostri porta al nuovo ospedale San Paolo. Se sembrano avere applicato ad ogni proposito. Rossello gioca animosamente la sua carta, ma Fausto ha la carta più alta. La butta in tavola. I veneti faranno gruppo. Saranno 14 e fra di loro Fausto. Se va a raggiungere Empalisse, Barbotin, Astrua che già in precedenza erano evasi. Ma non è ancora pago, scatta nuovamente e alla sua ruota davvero scatenata resistono solo il compagno e amico Barbotin, il belga Impalisse e il nostro bravissimo Petrucci. Allo scatto armonizzato dei francesi Barbotin e Bobè su capo cervo, nessuno ha resistito. Solo scatto ed Impalisse, capo Berta, sarà il momento di De Ricche. Ma c'è sempre Loreto stimolato dalla energica rivalità di Minardi. Petrucci dopo un anno di perplessità si è risolto a dire Ci sono tanto i cinque, Remy, Ockers, Filippi, Crespi e Fornara Cinque maschere di fango, specialmente Ockers e Remy Scomparso Crespi investito da una macchina del seguito cederà a Fornara Non ha ceduto invece Filippi Ed è proprio lui a monopolizzare Palmamion comincia subito, movimentando un attacco a soli 10 km dal via. Sarà questa per noi, questa più che mai, la Sanremo del Crepacuore. Nella fuga alimentata dalla speranza per 280 km, le nostre forze sono preponderanti rispetto a questo. Ma con i muscoli morbidi come marzapane. La reazione sembra tardiva, qui vediamo Bitossi all'inseguimento, in terza posizione c'è Gimondi in maglia tricolore, hanno lasciato di pochissimo il resto del gruppo e stanno cercando di portarsi su Dancelli e sugli altri. Uismans è il primo che riesce ad agganciare la sua ruota, poi l'instancabile e infaticabile De Meyer, gli altri fanno buona guardia. Gli italiani, Bitossi, Moser e gli altri non inseguono Gimondi in maglia ridata. C'è grande accordo tra i nostri campioni e in questa situazione la Sanremo non ci può sfuggire. Ecco Marc De Meyer che riesce ad agganciare Gimondi e Wismans. Ma tra Wismans e De Meyer non corre buon sacco. Eh, Pier. Va molto, mir, molto, con questo capo o con questo capo. Het is de eerste keer dat we geconfronteerd worden met beelden van een renner uit zijn ploeg. Zeg maar de derde Nederlandse ploeg die onder leiding zat van Freddy Martens. Maar oh bitter, wat bereikte onze nieuws vanochtend toen na 30. Maar daar beginnen nu toch ook de spieren een beetje strakker te gaan staan. Daar beginnen de zeduwen nu ook te komen. Daar weet men... Mocht u even niks horen, dan komt dat omdat een of andere Italiaan nu aan ons apparaat staat te frunniken. Omdat iets het niet doet of wel doet of het goed doet. In ieder geval, nou, het schijnt nog allemaal te werken. We zijn in de aanval gegaan. Gianni Bugno en zijn landgenoot Canzonieri. Angelo Canzonieri uit de ploeg van Contini. Bugno dus aan de kop met Canzonieri. En bij ons zit Roger de Vlaming. Drie keer winnaar en nog vier keer op het podium van Milan Sanremo. En we zien al direct dat Bugno zich kwaad maakt, Roger, omdat die Canzonieri blijkbaar niet wil overnemen. Dat Bugno een renner is. Michel en Nijdam op de back van deze drie. En Nijdam ook lijkt als hij zich daar zat. De Kier Pucci is driving this breakaway like a train. Tremendous piece of riding here by Kier Pucci. And with him is Rolf Sorensen for this race on the climb. There still, of course, are the big two climbs to come, and the main field is reported to be chasing at around one. A little bit of speed on the climb here. He drops back just a little bit. And the 
new team, Gavis team, has got all of their men at the front and beginning to chase down. And a very powerful four men they have there too. And this is now Bowman setting out the pace. No, he's not. He's on the wheel of Franz Masson. Word Perfect didn't have a great season last year. Their best win, really, was the great victory by Raoul Alcala in the Tour du Pont. Disappointing Tour de France for them. And in halfway through the year, they sacked Eric van der Arden from the team. And van der Arden now riding on the new Brescia Lat team. And in fact, leading them. And Luca Gelfi is on that team as well after his second place last year in this race. And I'm quite sure that when we get down to the finish in San Remo, we will find the security a lot tighter than it was a year ago after that horrendous crash, which reverberated around the corridors of the UCI all year. And they demanded change and indeed fined the organization quite a lot of money for the lack of security at the finish. Big figure of the champion of Holland there, Eric Breuking, setting the pace now. And he's pulled that race into a long, thin line as well. And what a lovely picture that is. The cycling season is on again. Obviously, he's been training hard through the winter. He's not a rider we've seen attack at the front for quite a while. Winner of, Mal of uh, Paris-Roubaix when he was champion of Belgium. It's almost as if he's tempting them to come out and join him. And he's got the gap. Now he's made the decision. He's going to have to go with it. Big head of hair. Had a third in Milan San Remo back in 1991. Una trentina di secondi ormai per Aldaghe Piccoli e noi facciamo una piccola pausa. Otto secondi. sono lì davanti che cercano di rimanere nelle prime posizioni coperte dai propri compagni di squadra sono i corridori che intendono fare la corsa però dobbiamo dire che la corsa è talmente in the top 40 or 50 men who are taking part in the race the rest are just riding along just look at the length of the peloton here and then the team cars going way off into the distance it is a big deal I thought we might have got at least a 50 or 60 rider breakaway here over the ripples but right now the whole field is hanging on for grim death um, Fabulous training, Paul, isn't it? Even if you're not going to win the Lantern River, it sets you up really for the April Classic. It's a very long race. Another break going clear as well here. This looks like Couch and Michelangelo from uh, the Aki team. He's opened up quite a good gap indeed, but Phil, the thing that always amazed me about the race of Milan San Remo was when the field is completely strung out, there's almost a minute's gap from the front yeah. of the main field to the back, so if you're not riding in the front 20 or 30, it's very difficult and you have to use an awful lot of energy to move up into the top 20 places. Right, literally. And there is a fair reaction from the field here. The telecom team are trying to latch on the back too. They've got a good sprinter, of course, in Eric Zabel, a man who's riding on tremendous form this year. He's had a great start to the season. Interesting to see the Bonesto team there, not normally a team we would no, see in the Classics this year. Obviously, the withdrawal of Miguel Indurain from the international peloton, but the Bonesto squad this year have seemed to completely change their roles when it comes to some of these races. They're taking part una media di 41 e 200 sono fuggiti dopo 8 km la media l'hanno fatta loro si fanno i complimenti a vicenda è stata un'avventura si, si sono spartiti il, il lavoro questo ha permesso alla Once di rimanere su, a ruota la squadra di Jalabert hanno sacrificato un uomo però tutti gli altri sono molto più freschi e la corsa praticamente come sempre inizia ai piedi dei tre capi ecco i due uomini al comando sono rimasti in fuga praticamente per 240 km, la loro fuga che li aveva portati ad avere un vantaggio massimo di 25 minuti al 118 km viene annullata. Ed ecco qua gli uomini della Deutsche Telekom il che dimostra che Zabel vincitore l'anno scorso, Zabel considerato il grande favorito è pronto per la... Alba to Imperia. A very difficult climb, that Capo Berta, right at the end, about five kilometers from the finish line in Imperia. And all of these riders, we're looking now at uh, Massimiliano Podenzana, who's on the front, riding for the Mercatone Uno squad of Marco Pantani. And strange to see Pantani riding so close to the front at the moment, obviously thinking that that very steep climb of the Capo Berta will suit him for a short attack towards the end. But another good finisher in their squad is Dmitry Konishev. 
Well, the race opened rather slowly today, but the weather is nice. And as you can see now, the race coming down to its last 12 kilometres. There is the ball head of the man who is making his name as a great climber these days. Recovered completely from his bad accident, Marco Pantani. And he's clearly given out the orders today to see what he's going like and probably to test the others as well. He's using the ripples of the hills down towards San Remo to test the peloton. Interesting. E hanno come capo squadra uno tra i, più, tra i corridori più in forma del momento, Frank Vandenbroek. Parliamo di questo Frank Vandenbroek l'anno scorso alla Mapei, poi doveva rimanere, poi ha firmato un paio di contratti, diciamo che se a livello umano... Oggio, eh, se non riuscisse nel suo intento avremo Zanini come punta veloce. Ringraziamo Serge Parsani a te Adriano. Ed è la candidata allo in testa. Io vorrei che Tommasetti mi ripresentasse Giancarlo Tommasetti, mitico regista con la collaborazione di Max Amazon. Vorrei che mi ripresentasse, l'abbiamo visto con la telecamera. It's the Palti colors with the yellow shorts there. Skibby comes back to number three, and it's the turn of Karsten Kroon on the front. Well, I'm sure there's been a few words of Flemish or Dutch, Dutch exchange there with Robbie Hunter because he's off the front of the main field. Well, here come the first two back into the fold as the tempo is picked up by the big field behind. Both for the first time, and that's when the race really starts to hot up, and that's why we see an awful lot of pressure coming on. And the most important part then is the final 50 kilometers with all of those climbs coming every 10 kilometers or so. And finally, with the big Poggio at the end, that's when the, the big men try and make their move. Bartolino gaat naar het is dat om zijn nervositeit te verbergen? Nou, er is echt nog niet gekoest, hè? Jekimov zit daar ook. Vyacheslav Jekimov. Van US Postal. Vorig jaar nog met Lance Armstrong aan de start, US Postal. 294 kilometer race. That's 184 miles in English money. And uh, so they're saying, that's how do we break this thing up? Because this is probably the longest uh, of the single day classics in the calendar. And even at the end of it all, at this time of the year, they still have the bunch coming in towards the back end with so many riders in the frame. And sharing the workload with Omega Farmer Lotto. Rabobank come to the front of the chasing group. They have got a lot of work to do, Sean. There's no let up here. There's going to be a lot of tired legs at the end of today. Yes, uh, uh, we can see he's already in the front group. We see a uh, host uh, losing contact there from Katusha, who was really pushing it on. And uh, we can see the uh, chasing group here with the uh, men from Rabobank. Um, it's not going to happen. There's, I don't think they can no, make it I now because so as we're on the clap about, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, just uh, under the 40 kilos. Verleden week zaterdag zit te kijken. Toch? Ja. Zes man zijn gaan lopen. Hebben 8 minuten 40 gekregen. Daarna is de koers stilgelegd vanwege te slecht weer. Sneeuw, mist, kou. Om drie uur is er een hegstart geweest. En mochten de zes man die van voren 7 minuten 10 hadden als eerste vertrekken. Van die zes is er één teruggevallen. Filippo Fortin. En is het peloton gegangmaakt naar een achterstand nu van drie minuten. Dat is de stand van zaken. We hebben nog iets meer dan 50 kilometer. Nibali, de Italiaanse verdette, zit achterin. En u ziet hem daar in het shirt van Astana. En hij gaat nu rustig naar voren. Op de capo Cervo. Dus dan kan hij nog even op de auto hangen. Op zijn regenjasje uit. Het is een hele strip die is dit. Het zal hem opluchten. Parmi les, les favoris, mais ça y est, c'est l'écrémage. Toujours cette euh, volonté du côté des équipes des favoris de fatiguer, de durcir la course pour provoquer cet écrémage, notamment dans les prochains kilomètres. Avec Viatkowski aussi, hein, regardez, on, on voit déjà vraiment des coureurs, j'ai envie de vous dire, qui se promènent sur le vélo. Parce qu'on a des coureurs qui peinent et, et cela se trouve en général à, à l'arrière du peloton. Là, nous avons une, une image de la tête de, de course qui continue, mais qui continue de perdre de, de, du temps, 2,25. Et puis derrière, des coureurs qui commencent déjà à se battre sur leur vélo. Ça pédale autant avec les épaules qu'avec les jambes. 
Et ça, oh, chute, chute, première chute. Vous voyez, ça devient nerveux. Des coureurs qui sont plus vraiment euh, un coureur de la formation Katusha, j'ai l'impression. Et Jacopo Garnieri, notamment pour la formation Katusha, là, qui est au sol. Ça va repartir. Là, ça chute sur les côtés, Cédric, parce qu'on essaie de remonter, hein, justement, les équipiers, les favoris constamment sur les côtés de la route pour venir se replacer. Oui, regardez cette, cette tension. Et c'est vraiment important pour un leader de pouvoir compter sur, sur des coéquipiers. To be in the Giro d'Italia who missed out this year. Mattia Fraporti is the man in the red representing Androni Giocattoli. Who else do we have representing Villia? It's Yulena Mesqueta Moreno, the uh, Basque rider. He's wearing 242. And he's doing the work on the front row, Sagan, and the clerk. 46.4k to go. Here we go. Here's the instance, Rob. 